In this video, I'll help you get your studio monitor set up and optimized for the best possible performance out of the box. And you'll also learn how to integrate a subwoofer if you should choose to use one. Thanks to Mackie for sponsoring this video and supporting audio education. I'll be demonstrating the studio monitor setup process with the Mackie CR series monitors and subwoofer. You can find links to each of these in the description below the video. Let's start with a basic studio monitor setup without a subwoofer. Then I'll show you a few ways to add in a sub later on. First, you'll want to make sure that your studio monitors are turned off and the volume knob is turned all the way down. This step prevents loud sounds that could damage your speakers and potentially your ears. The most basic way to connect studio monitors to your computer or another playback device is to use the built-in audio output on the device, such as a 3.5 millimeter or eighth inch output jack. To do this, you'll need an adapter with an eighth inch plug on one side and whatever connection your studio monitors have on the other side. In the case of the Mackie CR5BT monitors, we have the option to use either eighth inch RCA or quarter inch TRS. A stereo eighth inch TRS connector carries both the left and right channel through a single connector. If you're using an eighth inch to RCA adapter, the cable will break out into separate connectors, one for the left, the white connector, and one for the right, the red connector. The same thing is true for an eighth inch to dual TS adapter. You can use the built-in eighth inch audio output on your computer if you're just playing music back through your speakers, but there are several advantages to using an audio interface instead. Some of those advantages include the ability to record microphones, to connect headphones and monitors simultaneously, more flexibility and control, as well as many other benefits depending on the specific interface you choose to use. If you are using an audio interface, instead of the built-in audio output on your computer, you'll probably be dealing with either RCA, TRS, or XLR line outputs. And the cable you use will depend on the connections on your specific interface and your specific studio monitors. But there's just one thing I want you to keep in mind here. The stereo eighth inch connector and the RCA connector are only capable of unbalanced connections. This is completely fine at short distances below about 15 feet or about 4.5 meters. However, if you want the optimal connection, especially for longer cable lengths, you'll want to choose either TRS or XLR connections. These two connectors are interchangeable. The shape is the only real difference. So if you have quarter inch TRS outputs on your interface and quarter inch TRS inputs on your monitors, as is the case in this demonstration, you'll simply use a pair of quarter inch TRS cables between the interface outputs and the studio monitor inputs. But if your interface has quarter inch TRS outputs and your monitors have XLR inputs, you can simply use a pair of quarter inch TRS to XLR adapters. Keep in mind that there is a difference between a quarter inch TRS and a quarter inch TS connector. The TRS has a tip, ring, and sleeve for balanced connections, and the TS has only a tip and a sleeve, which cannot support balanced connections. Most studio monitors will be active or powered, meaning they have an amplifier built in. This isn't always the case. Some studio monitors are passive and will require an external amplifier between the interface and the speaker. In the case of the Mackie CR monitors, the amplifier for both the left and right monitor is located in one speaker. So the left and right output of the computer or interface go directly into the main speaker, and then the other monitor gets its power through a speaker cable between the two. You'll also find pairs of monitors that both contain an amplifier and therefore both require a connection to power. In these cases, you connect the left output of the interface, usually channel one, directly to the left monitor, and the right output of the interface, usually channel two, to the right monitor. Once everything is connected, ensure that the volume knobs on your studio monitors are turned all the way down and that the volume knob on your audio interface is turned all the way down. Next, turn on the studio monitors and the audio interface. From here, it's just a matter of finding a comfortable listening level. So what I'd recommend is starting with the knobs all the way down on the monitors, turn the audio interface volume knob about halfway or three quarters of the way up. Then play music you're familiar with and incrementally increase the volume on each monitor 
until you reach a comfortable listening level. Before moving on to monitor placement, let's quickly go over the setup for those of you who are using a subwoofer. There are a few ways this can be done. One way is to use a third output from your audio interface dedicated to the subwoofer. In that case, you connect the third output of your audio interface to the input of the subwoofer, and you follow the setup from the previous section for the main monitors. However, getting this to work properly is a bit more advanced because you'll need to do some routing within your audio interface and playback engine to make sure that the right signals reach the subwoofer at the right levels. Another common setup that's much simpler is what we have here with the Mackie system. In this case, the audio interface doesn't connect directly to the studio monitors. Instead, we take the left and right outputs from the audio interface, usually channels one and two, and connect them to the left and right inputs on the subwoofer. Then the subwoofer sends those same signals back out through the output connections to the studio monitors. This setup ensures that the signals sent to the studio monitors will also come out of the subwoofer with no need to do all the routing manually inside the audio interface and the DAW. There's also the added benefit of a built-in crossover, which you'll learn more about in a moment. Whether you're just using studio monitors or you're using a subwoofer as well, getting the positioning right is one of the most effective ways to optimize performance. The first step is to determine the room layout. Ideally, you'll have symmetry from left to right with the listening position centered between the two side walls. This helps ensure that the stereo image from left to right is as accurate as possible and not influenced by asymmetry in the room. In addition to this principle, it's usually recommended that you set up a rectangular room by facing a short wall with the long walls to your sides. This will place the back wall as far away as possible, reducing the impact of reflections off of the back wall. I understand you may not be working in ideal conditions and that's totally fine. Just do the best you can with the room you're working in and start practicing as soon as possible. That will go a lot further toward improving your mixes than waiting for acoustical perfection. And this brings up a good opportunity for me to mention the new Mixing Essentials course from Audio University. It's designed to help you understand four essential mixing tools, EQ, compression, reverb, and delay. You can become an Audio University member and get access to over 60 lessons by using the link in the description below the video. Another helpful studio monitor placement tip is to place the monitors so that the high frequency drivers called tweeters are facing directly toward your ears. That's because high frequency sound is more directional than low frequency sound. So we want the high frequency drivers pointed directly to the listening position. This could include not only angling the monitors inward to the listener, but also ensuring that the monitors aren't too high or too low. You can place them on monitor stands to bring the tweeters up to ear level or to angle the speakers upward or downward so the tweeters point toward your ears. A final placement tip is to aim for an equilateral triangle between each monitor and the listening position, where the distance between the listener and each monitor is equal to the distance between the monitors. This setup not only optimizes the stereo image to be wide enough without being too wide, but it also ensures that each monitor is equally spaced from the listening position. And this is very, very important. If the left speaker and right speaker are different distances from the listener, it can cause problems including stereo image distortion and phase interference, just to name a few. And we want to place the subwoofer with the same principle in mind if you're using a subwoofer. While a subwoofer gives you a bit more margin for error, it's still important that we optimize the relationship between the subwoofer and the studio monitors. And there are many ways to do this. For one, aim to place the subwoofer about the same distance from the listening position as the other monitors. Ideally, the sub will be in the middle, directly in front of the listener, but it's not the end of the world if you have to put it over to one side or the other, because we localize low frequencies differently than we localize mid and high frequencies. The goal is to configure the system so that the sound from the studio monitors and the subwoofer will reach the listener at the same time, specifically at the crossover frequency. See, the subwoofer will only produce low frequencies and the studio monitors will only produce higher frequencies. The point where the subwoofer and the studio monitors interact the most is the crossover frequency, which can be selected with this knob on the subwoofer. If your subwoofer doesn't have a built-in crossover, you can do this within an audio interface, but this is a bit beyond the scope of this video. To really optimize the crossover takes some listening and experimentation. 
and perhaps even some objective measurements. I'd recommend you start by playing a song you're familiar with and listening. Then adjust the crossover frequency and experiment with the polarity switch until you find a configuration that sounds best to you. You can even experiment with moving the subwoofer closer or further, as not all subwoofers and studio monitors will have the same phase response. But now we're getting a bit beyond the scope of this beginner setup video. So if you want to learn more about crossovers, watch the video over here on the top of your screen. And if you want to dive deeper into the studio monitor calibration process, I'd recommend starting with the video on the bottom of your screen. I'll see you there.